everybody, it's Emily and Clark on Sailing Vessel Temptress. Today we're going to share with you a sailboat cruising route that gets you from Florida through the Bahamas to Georgetown Exuma in small bite-sized pieces. We have some good friends, Rudy and Carol, who are going to the Bahamas for the first time this year. We did a Q&A with them and uh, did a video on that. Uh, you'll find that on our channel. This video cruising guide is a companion piece and I think this could be useful for other people going to the Bahamas for the first time gives a suggestion of one way to go through the Bahamas. This might be the first of many video cruising guides that we do. Clark has sailed more than 20,000 ocean miles and has a lot of knowledge he wants to pass on to others, and I've been working on my video editing. So if you're interested in seeing more guides for the rest of the world, please hit that subscribe button and leave some comments below. So Rudy and Carol's first big question was, what's the best way for them to get to the Bahamas from Florida? So we spent a lot of time that afternoon charting out their course, and we're going to share that course with you. One of their concerns was overnight sailing. They wanted to do it in uh, smaller hops so they wouldn't be stuck at sea at night. And I've uh, built this suggestion around that. They also didn't want to go into Nassau itself. So I'm talking about ways of going around uh, New Providence Island, but Nassau is available. This is just a basic route. There's lots of interesting places along the way, and you would be a fool to run through the Bahamas only stopping here. But this was so that from anywhere in this region, this is a good next place to go. These are only very rough graphics I did from memory using Google Earth. This is not a chart. Don't even think of using this for navigation. The first leg of the trip will be from South Florida to Bimini. They started up in St. Augustine, so they're going to have to work their way down, and they'll figure that out themselves. The further south you go, the easier this crossing would be. You can do it from anywhere, but the problem is the Gulf Stream. In this region, the Gulf Stream is doing about three knots north. And if you try to sail in this direction, you'll find you actually are traveling in this direction because of the uh, Gulf Stream. So probably if it was me, I would try to get down to the Miami area, but if you... The other part of it is you're going to be waiting for a weather opening. So if you were up here and there was bad weather, use that day to go further south. I uh, usually myself come from way down here because I'm usually coming from the west side of the state. So I'm not a great expert of how, where to leave from. I think this would be a, a, a reasonable place. Crossing from here over to Bimini uh, is often done overnight. So you can arrive in the morning. You would want to come into Bimini during daylight hours. Bimini used to be a little trickier to get into but they've done some dredging and they've done a lot of construction and all of that has just made it a lot easier. You come in this area, uh, it's, it's fairly well marked. You come around here, this is the only place that you have to really watch the bottom. After that, it's easy all the rest of the way. Come in here, um, this is kind of the old part of town. This is where like Hemingway would have hung out. The uh, port captain or the, I should say customs and immigration is right in this area. You'll be coming back to that. Come up the channel and at one point under these clouds, you will see the channel gets very, very narrow uh, and new. It's dredged and it takes you all the way up to this new construction area. Follow beyond the new marinas and at the north end, there are two places that are very good for anchoring. These are open areas they've kind of allowed for anchoring, I guess. I've anchored here. At the time I was there, there were too many boats, it was a little crowded and I moved over here and I found this a great place. Some other boats ended up anchoring here. All good ideas. The nice thing about Bimini is you've kind of got the best of both worlds. Um, of course, like uh, Clark said, um, you can check into customs, you can get your Wi-Fi set up, you can go to the Batelco office and get a cell phone, you can buy groceries, and there's these anchorages here. What we're looking at right now is the more developed, newer part of town. There's a Hilton Hotel and a resort and a casino and really nice shiny clean places if you continue uh, south on the island you go under a little stone bridge and that brings you to Bailey town and then farther into Alice town these are more uh, scrubby uh, Bahamian places uh, where you have little shacks with conch salad um, local restaurants um, I love to go to the ocean side of the island because there's not really much going on there and it's really really peaceful um, but you've kind of got the best of both worlds you've got civilization and then you've got getting used to kind of the Bahamas experience and, and what you're going to see for the rest of the trip. 
after leaving uh, Bimini, and nice thing about Bimini is that's a very protected bay. You can wait out any weather there. Wait until it's something to your liking and then leave. Uh, I recommend uh, going down to uh, Gun Key, just mostly because I like Gun Key. It's also a great place to start from. There's a way across this little bank here. There's a several of them. You kind of don't want to be out here because the current is a bit against you. Come up onto the bank and going south is much easier. This is Gun Key area. It's a bit of a scrubbed bottom here. And right in this area, I found soft enough sand to anchor securely. Gun Key is uninhabited, so you're not going to find uh, any real amenities there. But there's lots of hermit crabs. There's lots of sand beaches you can walk on. There's a little lighthouse. And it's a great place to spend a night before you head on the next leg. I should mention what uh, the draft requirements are for this trip. My boat and Rudy's boat both require five and a half feet. We have a centerboard, but we bring it up for crossing the bank. This area is the only place in this whole trip where you'd have to worry about more than, say, six and a half feet. And then you'd have to play your tides. There's a, the deepest, there's a little shallow area right in. I'm not actually sure where it is on this chart, but coming down this way, it's another reason to come down here to Bimini and cross. Right in here, there's a fairly deep hole. Okay, the next leg will take you across the bank. It's technically fairly long, but being the bank, you can uh, anchor mo anywhere you want. I tend to anchor right here after one long, pleasant day of sailing. The bank is kind of special. There's always less wind on the bank than there is anywhere else. And a wave is two feet. Uh, because of the shallow water, the bigger waves tend to break before they become a problem. So uh, a day sail to take you to this region. Uh, and then another day will take you down to New Providence Island. Just to mention, there's a couple other places if the weather got bad and you needed to duck in. Uh, Morgan's Bluff is here. That's good in most conditions, except for north, and there's an inner harbor for north. And over here, Hog Island or Hog Key, there's a cut right up that side of it. You can go up quite a ways and be very protected. You can go all the way up to this little area here. That's Hog Key, that's Bird Key. Those are the best I found in that area. Now to Providence. Again, uh, Rudy doesn't want to go into Nassau itself, which is up here. I like this West Bite a lot, and uh, it, it's very pleasant, very protected in most conditions, and there's an island out here with some fairly decent diving in this area. Again, we like to avoid NASA, but some people do like to go. If you do go, there's some ruins there. You can see there's a post office. You can have groceries, but your boat will likely be subject to inspection. Um, we do like, however, there's a place called Rose Island. Really close to that, there's a little island called Gilligan's Island that's got a, some ruins of kind of like a little coconut shack. Okay, back on our way. Uh, this area is okay for anchoring in the right conditions. I would imagine this area would have a lot of places to anchor. I've anchored up here uh, with, with uh, good effect. Just lots of places that aren't inside. Inside of NASA, there's boats traveling, wakes all the time, loud music. It's kind of this New York City in the 70s vibe, and I don't like that. Okay, the next crossing uh, bears a little extra notes. It's shallow again. We're on the bank, a different bank. If you were to cross from West uh, Bight, you are going across something called, geez, I forget which is the yellow and which is the white, but it's a bank. Uh, that has coral, but the coral is quite deep. And you can pass over it anywhere and go on down to Allen's Key. If you come from this side of the island, you're going to pass over kind of this area. And this is a bit shallower. There are routes, and I've gone through this many times, just following the charts and going around, finding the deeper holes between heads. Okay. Allen's Key is really nice. Again, it's uninhabited, so you're not going to be able to get provisions or anything there, but it's a great place to see all the rock iguanas. All three of these little sections here um, have rock iguanas on them. There's also a great diff drift dive that we found up here on the north part of the island. If you take your dinghy and just hold it by your painter and float through this little area uh, at the right tide, you can see lots of different little fish, and it's just a really short dinghy ride from where the anchorage is. 
the good anchorages here are in this area, in this area, and over here. Um, I've anchored here uh, last time we were going through the area. It was great. Okay, from Allen's Key, and there's lots of places in between, I recommend uh, a very easy half-day sail down to Norman's. Norman's was where Escobar, I believe it was, had his uh, cocaine importing station. So it has a checkered history. And uh, what's famous about it, it has a sunken cargo plane uh, right there. You can dive that. The anchorages in this area are anywhere in this channel, just anywhere at all. Uh, I anchored here last time. The other things we like about Norman's Key, we found a really cool dive at a place called the Whale's Tail. You can see this area looks like a whale and there's its tail. There were some reefs around there where we saw some rays and some fish that we hadn't seen before. Um, there's also a, a great big area that dries at low tide and you can just walk on this like you would walk on a giant beach. Uh, the patterns in the sand are especially nice. Okay, south of Norman's is the uh, park and the park has a lot going on. If you enter the park and spend the night, you're going to be charged per person per day. If you use a mooring, you'll be charged more for that. It's, it's there. It's nice. It probably should be experienced. It has what is probably the best single little teeny dive in the whole Bahamas. And when I mean tiny, it's the size of two tabletops, but you're going to see more there than anywhere else. There are other dives that are 90% as good, but if you really wanted to dive the best place, it's called the Sea Aquarium, and it's right here, probably right there. It's well marked. There's a dinghy mooring balls and a sign above it, I believe. And again, this area, you can see this really shallow area that all dries at low tide, and that's a lovely walk. You can pick up uh, sand dollars like crazy in that area. We continued down to um, Staniel Key, and we anchor here at Big Major Spot. I believe that's the name of this island, but it refers to this anchorage for us cruisers. Lots of places in this area to anchor. Uh, this is the off-season. You see there's already a lot of people here. This is um, just one of the many places to anchor. And the cool thing about Big Major Spot, this is where the swimming pigs are. This is Pig Beach, for those of you who know about that. Uh, the pigs have been, become quite aggressive, and it's not our favorite spot. Um, but if you come here, you kind of have to take a picture with the pigs. It's an obligatory thing when you go to the Bahamas. But there is a really great dive just across the way called Thunderball Grotto. They did shoot part of the Thunderball James Bond movie here, also part of Splash with Daryl Hannah. In our other video about the sea life at Thunderball Grotto, you'll see that there are lots and lots of fish to be seen there. Uh, there's a cave uh, with a hole in the top. Some people hike up there and jump in from many, many feet in the air into this deep water. Um, it's just a great place to be. And then a little farther down, there's a place where you can feed nurse sharks. We don't recommend you do because sometimes they bite. Um, but you can get on shore there. There are some little shops where you could uh, stock up on things. There's great cell phone signal. Um, so you can get reception and, and download your emails and all the things you need to do. From there, I've uh, drawn a line that will take you quite a long distance uh, to a way to get out onto the ocean for the final deal. Along the way, the only thing of real interest is Black Point. A lot of boats hang out at Black Point. It's there. But you can do all this in a day very easily. This is Musha Key. Um, it's where I like to make my crossing of the ocean, but you can do it very easily. Well, you can do it at Staniel Key. You can do it here at Farmer, Big Farmers. Uh, you can do it here. I don't remember what it's called, but uh, Musha Key, I'm going to talk a little bit in detail on, and I'm going to talk about how to cross that into the ocean. This can be perilous if done wrong. It's very easy if done right. The, there's a lot of current as the water from the ocean wants to get up onto the bank and get off the bank. And if there's waves, which there usually are, uh, blowing uh, into these cuts and the water is going the other way, the waves will stack up like uh, people going the wrong way on an escalator. And you simply don't want to do this. Current on waves is simply not a good idea. So you wait until the current is fighting against you, trying to come in. And that way the waves will die down and you can make this transit very easily. 
Uh, another thing to note, Mushiki is all private, so there's nothing on this island that you can't even go to the beach or go swimming. Uh, you anchor here, you swim off your boat, uh, and you prepare to leave the next day. But it does provide some good anchorages. We've anchored kind of in little cuts, bites in this area. Last time we came in, we went, uh, don't follow the line, around this sand and down to about here and anchored and found very good protection. I think you could stay, wait out a storm here fairly well. When you're ready to leave, cut out here, get yourself out to the ocean. And the last time we did this, we did this in one shot all the way to Georgetown because we had uh, good conditions. If you find you have to beat into the wind, you might want to stop along the way or just might want to stop along the way anyway. If you do, I can re highly recommend uh, Lee Stocking Island. It's an easy cut. I haven't seen a condition where the waves are bad here. Come in, follow it around. There's a fairly marked channel that gets you into this area, which is an anchorage I've ridden out 45 knot winds in and, and without a problem at all. Lee Stocking Island is an abandoned research station. It's technically private, um, but it was quite abandoned when we were there last time, and we did get the chance to walk around a little bit. Um, and it's kind of a ghost town. It's like everybody just picked up and left. There's still vehicles there. There's still labs there. They're still almost mid-experiment. Some people, looks like they left. But it's a cool place to explore, but it, it very well may be private and restricted now. There's even a hyperbaric chamber there. Uh, the doors have been taken off, so it, you can't get in trouble or anything. But um, that's something that's interesting to see and poke around in. Even if you can't get off your boat and explore this island, it is a pretty place just to anchor your boat and hang out there. The next leg will take you to Georgetown proper. Uh, again, right on down the follow the green line. You come in in this area. Don't use this for navigation, uh, but if you look at your chart, you'll see there's things you have to go around to get into where the boats anchor. This is the area where everything really happens in Georgetown. There are several anchorages. Emily can go through them. Our boat is here now. We're on a mooring right there. Georgetown is a bit of a cruiser mecca. A lot of people come here, uh, meet other people, gather information about other routes, then go off to other areas of the world. And uh, they often come back to Georgetown after they've been to other parts of the world. So this is a great place to meet people from all over. Uh, 300 boats at peak season, which is around February or March. And there's social activities every day. Uh, and the nice thing that we like about it is you can pick whether you want to be in those areas with you know dozens of other boats and lots of things going on, or if you want to choose a little bit more remote area and then use your dinghy to get into um, the social activities when you want to. Um, on the south part of Elizabeth Harbor is Georgetown, and this is Lake Victoria here. A lot of people anchor in Kid Cove, which is right outside. Uh, you can bring your dinghy in there and just walk everywhere. And if you need to get anywhere you can't walk, you can hitchhike. Everybody's very, very friendly in the Bahamas. Georgetown has everything you need. It's got groceries, it's got fuel, diesel and gasoline. You can get a cell phone, you can uh, re-up your internet plans. There's a laundromat, you can do shipping. Uh, for the technicalities, uh, there's a bridge here, a stone bridge. You come under this with your dinghy, uh, tie up to this dock. A very good grocery store here. Another useful grocery store here. Uh, there's a Patelco building here. And the most important thing to know to find your way around, when you get here, channel 72 in the morning at 8 o'clock uh, is the net. Listen to the net and there'll be opportunity to get all of your questions answered. And they'll be answered by Emily because she's the net controller. The main anchorages for boats are on this side. Uh, they all have names. Mm -hmm. So this is an anchorage that's very popular. You'll see boats anchored all the way up. This is an amazingly popular anchorage. It's where a lot of social activity happens. Uh, and then uh, boats will be all the way up to about here. Um, this is just a wonderful place to be. If you come here, plan to stay for at least a couple weeks because you'll want to, you'll want to, take advantage of everything Georgetown has to offer. Again, this is the route we're recommending for Rudy and Carol based on uh, their desire to not sail overnight and their desire to avoid Nassau. This is how to get from Florida to Georgetown.